Have you enjoyed the me taking everything out of context videos? It's just pictures of me saying something and then you'll do a reaction shot of Jane saying, what the fuck? <laughs> it makes it seem more intense. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying like the most sensible thing at the time if you were there, but you just chop it up like I'm I'm a schizophrenic talking. <laughs> So that's that's some pre Fablemans banter. We're talking about the Fablemans today, 2022 film. You know what the Fablemans is. I don't have to go into the history. It just came out. It just came out, uh, starring um, Michelle Williams, Paul Paul Dano, and uh, Seth Rogen, and David Lynch. And um, <laughs> is that uh, a direct... spoiler? <laughs> Ooh, it's a spoiler. I Ooh. I hate David Lynch. I don't care. He can pop up in anything and make everything worse. He looks just like him. It's so fucked up. I really just consider that he was there to play John Ford because Steven Spielberg is a hyper literal like metaphor guy and is like, it was a surreal experience. So I'll have the modern master of surrealism play the part. <laughs> that, that's what I took from it. Um, wow, we just jumped right to the ending. By the way, spoilers. Um, this is the high, high quality content. High production. It is. Oh, I'm not going to edit out the beginning of this. <laughs> yes, talking about Yo, other trust videos. Me, I know all too well you never edit out the beginnings. It's ruined my business propositions in the past. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, the Fablemans. What did you think of the Fablemans, Isabel? It's great. It is great. <laughs> no, anyway. it, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Uh it was inevitable uh to that we would talk about it since i feel like i've talked about spielberg and all our recent content we've done mm -hmm. together um, and um and michelle williams is the coolest person ever so yes yes plain here's me. my problem with the fablemans this is gonna be like all around i think it's great but i think it's like does spielberg know what he did does he know that he comes off as like a psychopath that wants to fuck his mother. Does he know that he did that? I want you to know, uh, my the whole per my reading, the whole movie is about just how when you're doing this shit, you just gotta like impulsively do what feels right in the moment with absolutely no sense of the consequences, and that is simply how Spielberg operates. Okay. For instance, I'm going to make a movie about the Holocaust, and then he makes a movie that does not care in the slightest about six million Jews. It cares about how Spielberg kind of relates to this one Nazi guy who did a good thing once. What that is, what that is, okay. We'll start it here. Okay. So there are a couple different ways to read the film. Um, we'll start it with like a quick like Jewish reading, then we'll go cinema reading, and then we'll go psychotic reading. Okay. <laughs> they're all psychotic readings i hope you know but the jewish one this is the interesting one because i wanted to comment on the schindler's list thing you just it's said. been on my mind too because i watched uh munich last week mm -hmm. too um well munich is almost an outlier here in what i'm about to say uh i think we can like even look at the same scene and analyze it in three different ways and it's the post-prom oh, hallway scene that i think is the most fascinating here oh me after, too i'm glad you felt that way too because i yeah, did, after, i really um, felt that way after little little steven uh shows off the um the the fucking like spring break or whatever like the fun volleyball film he made of like the people who bully him of all the gentiles in his class and makes them look like gods and like perfect like, like young oh my people God. He you gets just, asked by just that alone just clicked something in my brain and yeah. i feel like an idiot now as a jew it clicked something huge in my brain um because i think that in that hallway like like when that when that like king of the jocks is asking steven like hey why why did you make me look like that? I, I don't look like that. Why would you make me look so, so, so great and good? Like, what, what, what is your, what's your angle? What do you, why did you do this to me? And I think that Steven Spielberg is admitting to making Gentile power fantasies. I honestly think that's exactly what he's saying. Because Schindler's List is not a film for Jews. That's a film that is about the one Gentile who saved a bunch of Jews. Like, 
that that's yeah. not about Jews. None of his movies have been about Jews. Even Saving Private Ryan, the one openly Jewish character, got the worst death. He was like the guy who got that slow stab in the chest. Like, and I, it, it was something Even, like um, the the whole point of I feel like in part the whole point of Indiana Jones is that uh, he grew, you know, he was a Jewish kid who grew up, who was born in like the first half of the twentieth century. And mm -hmm. he makes a movie about a guy who beats the shit out of Jews or Jesus beats the shit out of Nazis. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, isn't uh, Jewish. Like Indy, watching Indy the is not, is not Jewish. I thought that this was his first truly Jewish movie. Like I think this is his first movie that's not made for Gentiles. That's actually made for Jews. I really, I really got that feeling from this film. Um, I can see that. More than um, more than I, Munich, even that's the outlier, though. But that's also one where I don't know if he's talking to Jews or if he's talking to like uh, to the woes of, of what two thousand four or five when that movie came out, like to the war yeah. on terror. I don't know if he's speaking I, to. I. He's always like he doesn't really care about the big picture thing a lot of the time. Which again, like Schindler's List, he's like, yeah, I get it. Six six million Jews died, but like. But he's hyper Besides aware of that, the anti-Semitism. Like I almost feel like he knows that the best way to get to a Gentile is to make them think that they are they are better than other people because Gentiles are well, inherently Well, because like selfish. in Munich, I in Munich, I feel like the point is that uh, at least like I don't know what his actual politics are, but like my sense based off of the plotting in Munich is that he's pro-Palestine, and yet he deliberately yeah. in the film inhabits the the subjectivity of an Israeli man, you know. And focuses Ooh. entirely on that. And the the Palestinian, the only Palestinian characters in the movie are completely like othered and kind of like outside yeah. of that 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 subjectivity. So we never really get any interior understanding. My major criticism with with Munich is that I don't think he's speaking to to, to Israelis or Jews. I think oh, he's speaking to Gentiles not. and like how Gentiles are supposed to be reacting to the war on terror. I yeah, think I agree. It's fascinating. But he's smart enough to know that, like, Gentiles had this certain way of looking at, like, a Jewish culture, too. That um... Actually, I, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, I, I know at one point, some point in, like, the 90s, I think, he, he mentioned that he never really gave thought to himself as Jewish until he made Schindler's List, which is interesting to me since, like, Schindler's List is not really about his relationship to his religion but all but it, it is interesting to me that he's basically saying like i did not give a like a thought to the like any of that my culture until i was almost like until i think he was middle-aged at that point like he I mean, was uh, well into his career this at that film point. seems to like argue the opposite which is, yeah and that's what i was gonna say it's super interesting or maybe it's just one of the i i thought maybe it's just one of those things like it just fell into the background for him and so like you yeah, never really I think that's the way it works it. for for most that's the way it's worked for me like I am not a religious Jew but I will always call myself you know like part of the tribe kind of thing like yeah. there there it is a culture thing more than even a religious thing for me personally and I definitely for yeah. Steven like there's something so like Steven Spielberg has never done like 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 a like a teen naive scene of like romance so so psychotically and also so tenderly like like such tenderness as like the jew pretending to convert to like christianity, to christianity. in the moment like i've i've been there dude like that happens yeah but that that i think that that's that, that that's the jews dilemma <laughs> like, but oh my god okay i don't even know where to go on fablemans but okay so we can I'm, take a look at that same hallway scene right what does it mean for cinema I mean, I like I said, I I think a, my immediate reading was that that's where I kind of like put in perspective a lot of the film is that um, the the a lot of the film is how um, he uses cinema to regain control in the world, right? Like he yeah. it, the the most Freudian movie he's made since like AI in that way, and I don't just mean the mom shit. I mean like. Freudian in the sense that like he 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 gets scared by by a train crash in a movie and so to reenact he keeps reenacting it in order to get control of it right and they even True. do a cool shot I like where the train is coming at him and he's like ah the train's coming right at me which I thought was funny um but he he this keeps coming up because then he makes a war movie when he realizes his parents have a failing marriage um and then 
at the end he does he does this beach movie for for again like kind of vague reasons at least to me like how he depicted these guys but the important part is that like he makes it for one reason for himself and then every time he is completely unaware of how it's going to impact other people until after the fact yeah and i i think that's like become the hallmark of like spielberg himself because we've talked about in the past like how spielberg is a chaotic fucking filmmaker so how does he keep cementing this place in like pop culture i don't it, it doesn't really make sense to me like for people who didn't like as someone who didn't obviously grow up in the 1980s indiana jones feels like a movie that's just existed since the dawn of time like yeah, it, I, it, I, I think he's outside of fablemans i think he's thoughtless like i, I yeah I think... he is and he I think doesn't. Sam Fableman is thoughtless. I th- I yeah. really think he is. It, but again, it's like a Freudian thing where it's like he it's completely subconscious. He doesn't realize he's doing it, but the pattern is very consistent. And I think that's the same Spielberg's kind of like self-diagnosing that this is what he's been doing his whole career. Yeah. Um, because he's he's always trying to do it for one reason, you know, like I'm sure he had like relatively mundane reasons for say making Schindler's list. But that's interesting because Schindler's List has infiltrated pop culture to some extent that I've literally seen arguments that it it is part of the reason why it it is so like well known even like you know 80, 90 years later. Like people still talk about the Holocaust in an important way in like schools and shit. And I've seen arguments that like people stopped talking about it for a while and then suddenly Schindler's List came out and it like infiltrated pop culture and suddenly like it it was a thing that people can't really forget, even if they're not taught about it, because it exists in pop culture now. But I, feel I like, like I can't act like there aren't unforgivable things about Schindler's List, though. Oh like, no, it's the most perverted like, movie I've ever it, seen. He may life. have let it like permeate pop culture, but I, w- I would have rather waited for for Polanski's pianist or something to do that. Oh instead. no, straight up, like, it is the most perverted movie I've ever seen in my life. It yeah. is, it he, yeah. he, it is a movie about like a a capitalist who doesn't isn't able to see a world outside of capitalism and so he's just like as a rich guy how am i going to use my rich guy superpowers to save a few people but i can't save all of them because that's just absurd and i feel like spielberg saying he relates to that because he is a rich guy who uses his powers as a hollywood filmmaker to make a few people feel happy for two hours before they go home and everything's miserable again and it's like he's saying that's enough that's enough and it's like it's not enough steven you're 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 a rich guy who makes movies it's like it's fine but it's it's still perverted and narcissistic but i'm fascinated by it um regardless i'm saying like i think the hallway scene that 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 kid's response is kind of the thing like he just flies by the seat of his pants he does not think about consequences ever he he makes a movie about the holocaust without ever thinking should i make a movie about the holocaust you know what i mean like he never thinks like, like is that an the appropriate thing, that makes thing him to do psychotic is that he's aware like he pushed yeah. the kid actor to the point of like drama like walking through that field in the war movie right and like yeah it shows that he knows that that had an effect on him but he doesn't care like it shows that he knows I'm, he shows I'm that he knows he... the gravity that he's dealing with but he just doesn't care I'm wondering if he doesn't really realize just how manipulative that is, if that makes sense. He has to. He has to, because that that scene was filmed perfectly. It's like the birth of a master gaslighter. It's like... That scene was filmed perfectly. Like, your heart was with the kid who just kept walking. Like, holy shit, yeah. I'm responsible for all my friends dead. Thanks. Yeah, it's... And this is... Like, he knows what he's doing. That's why we can't... (laughs) Like, which is why like, i take this film as so like equal parts like narcissistic but also like self-critical i think i see it as confessional it's, like, it's, a, it's yeah it's like, confessional it's this isn't it's a love letter say. it's it's a fucking confession oh, oh no i actually um the the as far as i'm concerned like the world's foremost spielberg lunatic is uh neil bahader and he said it's his coldest movie since ai uh it's, which it's i don't know if cold. i go I, I don't know if I'd go quite that far. But, but I, I'd every and AI that is my Michelle, favorite. For the I think that's why I needed Michelle Williams because everything about her is warmth. Yeah. Although I do think it's interesting that she is kind of like her and Paul Dano are like, to me anyway, watching, they feel very like distant, but you can like see how much interiority is there. 
It's just that Sam never cares to interrogate their interiority. Does that make sense? No. It's yeah, like it you does. can you can you can see the 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 depth of their feeling. You can see how much Paul Dano feels. You can see how much his mother feels. You you see that, but they never really fully give themselves open to to Sam. Instead, he's seen his parents like tell their kids they're having a divorce, and it it cuts to him imagining filming it like a movie scene. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're a psychopath. <laughs> you're <laughs> Another scene that, well, actually, Michelle Williams did a great performance, gotta say that. Oh, she's um, lovely in it. Uh, lovely. She did incredibly here. Uh, actual fans of the channel will know that I, I, I love Michelle Williams mostly because of her work on Dawson's Creek, um, which I, I was going to ask say, uh, what your take is from this, this angle. show. I mean, th this film is almost a complete ripoff of Dawson's Creek. I know it's his life, so it's not a ripoff, but I also know this. That in order Steven to Spielberg make Spielberg ripped off his childhood from Dawson's Creek. Yes, and that's the most postmodern thing I can think of. But okay, so for the first season of Dawson's Creek, Dawson Leary is this kid who wants to be a filmmaker, and he's obsessed with Steven Spielberg. Um, at the end of the very first episode, you find out that his mother is having an, an affair, and in order for him to feel like more in control about his life, he he likes to control everybody within it as if they're in a movie and then actually make movies about his own life and cast the jock as himself, like to make him look like better and cooler and that, th those kinds of things. Um, it's more art imitating, uh, life imitating art there, but it's also about control. It's also about thing with Dawson's Creek is though Dawson starts off psychotic and like ends up understanding that our life isn't a movie and you don't want it to be a movie because all movies do is objectify people that's all that film does you want to actually be around these real people but my point is um this film is so much like Dawson's Creek it's kind of insane for me uh but here's the kicker he was obsessed with Steven Spielberg and in order for them to like have posters of all of his films in his room and reference him all the time, like the Peter Pan syndrome thing, they'd reference constantly. They had to first Kevin Williamson had to write basically a love letter to Steven Spielberg begging to like be able to use his name and IPs and all that. And he's like, sure, on one catch, I get to read every script before it is filmed and I get to watch every episode before it is aired. Michelle Williams started off on that show. That's her very first show. And she's yeah, like has yeah, so yeah. many scenes with Dawson where they deconstruct Steven Spielberg as an artist. So many scenes. So like our boy watched every episode of at least the first season of Dawson's Creek and read every script and approved of everything <laughs> and knew who Michelle Williams was. Like from there, that had to be his first time seeing her. That was the first thing she was ever in. She was like an emancipated minor. She was like 16. And he still mommy. saw her and thought, "Mommy." <laughs> that scene uh, of 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 Sam, his dad, and his dad's best friend, hornily watching his mom dance. That was my segue into the next big scene: was Michelle Williams dancing at at the campfire or whatever, um, in a very sensual way. But Steven Spielberg knows he's being psychotic because his sister is running around going like, mom, you're like indecent. Can you stop? Can you stop filming? Can everyone just stop drooling over my mom? This is sexual and weird and gross. It's like, so he knows the objections and he knows that he's objectifying his own mother. He knows what cameras do. He knows what film does. I don't even think he thinks he's an artist. Well, I I was actually going to say um, in regards to the Dawson thing, which I haven't watched, but based on your analysis of it or description of it, is that I feel like the conclusion that Stephen comes to is that his whole life has consisted of him objectifying other people and he doesn't know any other way to live. That's that his sense. fucking problem. A teen drama met that but hump and like got over it. Well, it's more like he thinks like that is an innate part of being a person is what I feel like Spielberg is arguing. Like, I, I think he might say, I don't think you cannot do that. <laughs> Which is and very... he belongs in an insane asylum. Like, I don't know what to yeah. say there. Um... He does belong in an insane, <laughs> in an insane asylum. Did that's not a healthy AI? thing. That's something that like a 17 year old film bro thinks. Like, you mm -hmm. get over that. Mm hmm. You know, um, I even think that the last time we see his mother is it, it, objectified in a really harsh way of 
Paul Dano like crying, looking at a picture with him and with her and Seth Rogen in the background because they had no. She she left Paul for Seth yeah. Rogen, which is which I think is great because it's an image again. It's the power images. of the image, images. and it's something that he gave to his father to look at because he's psychotic. Yeah, and he said, "I'm sorry, I gave this to you to look at. You had to have known what that would have done to your dad." Like, oh, you didn't notice that? How do you not? You literally edit film constantly. His his parents tell uh, tell them they're getting divorced, and he asks his sister to watch his movie with him. But it's the only way he can control his life. It's the only he way can't he can even have, have a conversation his... with his mom about about the about the infidelity. He's like, go into my closet and shut the door and watch this reel. He. It's it's the dark side of truth at 24 frames a second. It's the only way he knows how to understand. This is the world. a villain origin story. I think it's great, but I think it's I great, think it's amazing. I think it's a great um, argument against being a filmmaker. No, I lean more towards Steve's side. I think everyone's a pervert, but I don't. I don't know. I my my arc has been like oh, everyone's a pervert because I'm 17. Then I was like, that's kind of an immature worldview. And I was like, oh, no, I was right. No, I was right. <laughs> it's like, I, like, I don't know. I Maybe I'm not as... Ju- I, although everyone I don't know has I their it. Everyone has their perversions, but control is a kink, I, not just a perversion. Like I don't know if I think of it as in as like dark a way, though. I don't, I don't know if I interpreted it. belongs in a fucking Cronenberg film the way that watching that train crash gave him like a fucking epiphany like that. Which he would later that's, that's use for a sexual thing. awakening that feels like it came from his mother dancing all sexy like. This is that's literally a thing in Freud. <laughs> like he <laughs> literally re- it's the uh the, the 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 kid is sad when his mom leaves, so he takes his toy and he throws it across the room but he tied a string to it. So every time he throws his toy away and it leaves him, he brings it back. And that's how he relives and conquers the trauma of his mom leaving every day to go to work. Is And that's what he does in the movie. He keeps filming the fucking train crash over and over and over again. What's interesting is I thought this was like an artful film. I thought it was like sophisticated and dark and, and moody. Um, I was in it with like a pretty decent audience. The audience were not responding well. And like, really? in fact, when the ending happened, they're like, what the fuck was that? Oh, I, I think I had a better reception, but I might have had a smaller out like group of people than you. Whereas my, I laughed my ass off at the jerk to make the fucking skyline at the bottom. Or whatever. Which, which is a story he's told like you've told me that ago. story. I don't know if it was in a video, but you told me this story years ago. He also he also told the weed story before. He said that he never smoked weed because he wanted to have control in his life. And he said that in an interview like 20 years ago. We should not let this man be the introduction that most children have to film. I think this is an argument against popular filmmaking. Well, actually, it's funny you say that um, because I'm, he who shall not be named, Armin White, um, famously is is was a diehard of Spielberg, but he thinks like most of his work in the last like 15 years is a sellout work, basically. Like he thinks he's sold out, um, but that he was amazing like 2001 or um, AI is the best movie of all time and all that but um armin white once argued in a review for i think et that um spielberg was for adults all along which i think is interesting because i did not like have any opinions at all about spielberg growing up i could not have possibly been more ambivalent about steven spielberg as a kid as a teenager like i was like E.T.'s fine. Jurassic Park is fine. I like but Indiana Jones, but everyone does. Yeah, you're the exception, though. Most kids were raised on E.T. and Indy. Well, no, I was raised on Indy. I do like And, and Jurassic yeah. Park. Well, no, like I saw them, but they always like faded into the background after watching. But then like I, I watched E.T. like a few months ago and I was like, this guy is amazing. I do love this E.T. Guy. I think I think E.T. is a great film. All right. Like, e- I think it's a great film. Basically, what I'm saying is like Spielberg didn't hold any interest for me until I was in my mid twenties. That was but when. Now, he but suddenly... now is he like an interest as a talent or as like a cautionary tale? A talent. Well, a fascination. Okay, um, that's better. 
A A AI, I think, is legitimately like one of my favorite films ever made. I, I, I adore AI. That, I think, is his only Stone Cold masterpiece, probably. But do you uh, think Kubrick had any say in that one? I think he wrote the original script. Yeah. Um, I know I know the first act and the last act were conceptually Kubrick's ideas. The middle act was Spielberg's idea, but that Spielberg obviously like did a redraft of the screenplay and he did enough drafts to like only get sole credit for the. I used to think that Spielberg was always like that meme of like, oh, you're so close to getting it, but you made the opposite argument. But now I know that he understands what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And like he, understands um, the gravity of, of the film like the color he, purple or fucking Schindler's List or Saving Private Ryan and literally does the worst thing, the most exploitative thing that you can do to those topics yeah. on purpose. He he reminded me a lot. I, I think he is like one of the best directors of of subjectivity because he absolutely always inhabits completely the subjective experience of his main character regardless of how fucked up it is to do so regardless you know that that's why schindler's list is the way it is because schindler's list takes place from the pov of someone who 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 is just like a like a fucking neolib but like a capitalist you know he who saves a few people by employing them in his factory he doesn't like undermine the status quo in any fundamental way and i think munich does the same thing because munich it takes place from the pov of a hitman for israel in a movie that clearly sympathizes more with Palestine. And so he he just doesn't give a fuck about it. He's just interested in like the 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 questions those things bring up, regardless I of also how thorny think that or... that's a reprehensible thing to do when you're making art oh. for the for the largest audience possible. I think it's kind he, of reprehensible. It is. And that's why I'm fascinated by it. Because I'm like, why is this man so unapologetically evil? All well, that's why time. I feel with the Fablemans, he's kind of like part of the Jewish experience is like inserting yourself into a world that kind of just like fucking ridicules you or devalues you. Like you have mm -hmm. to carve your niche out where you can. And film yeah. is the best place for Jews to do it because we seem to have a, a, a knack for it. It's in our blood. Yeah. We like he, it. I mean, even even his last movie, West Side Story, which I, I quite liked. Um, he in that movie, it's like completely incoherent because the 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 jets in that movie are supposed to be analogous to like proud boys like trumpers but but one of the members of their group is a trans dude who's like i want to be one of the cool guys and then it's like a then, spielberg movie and and the whole end of the movie is basically all these 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 different like cultural groups are going to kill each other because of prejudice, but they didn't choose to be that way. They were molded that way by by culture, but they can't escape that culture. And so culture will inevitably always make people separate and then want to kill yeah. each other. And it's going to end with everybody dead. That's, Have a good day, guys. Think, this was directed by like, Steven Spielberg. And like, like, that's the movie. Well, my, my Jewish background might be getting to me, but that's why I think that like the Jewish reading of Fablemans is is the truest reading because the sensibilities are so strong. You want to talk about a group of people who have wildly felt like they haven't had control over anything for yeah yeah ages, millennia, and now yeah. abuse control whenever they get it. Seemingly, at least in yeah. in the neo libs mind, Super. yes. Um, yeah. I, th I think it's a, I think he's making a lot of large statements about about actual Jewish people. And I think that this film is actually for Jews. I, I just think that the Jewish reading of the film is something that like conveniently gets left out of the discussion, at least so far as I've seen it. The Gentiles make it about them again for like a weird interpretation where I think like I think the Jewish reading is like so rich here. I think it's yeah. saying a lot. And, I, and that's where I think that's where I'd come to your to your position where he's saying that like this is the way it is every life is every jewish every jew's life is like this that's where yeah, i can. I do think he's but, kind of a doomer but every artist's life is not that that's why i don't think the cinema reading works or else he's the most reprehensible person in the world if it's a jewish no reading, he's just the most reprehensible Jew. person in the world okay fair enough he's, fair enough he's steven spielberg he's, he's he doesn't give a fuck you no, I mean I get it. I get it. Um, uh, I get what you're saying. Um I I just 
think he really <laughs> is that much. It's it's more that I think he's just willing to exist as a as a ball of contradictions, and he doesn't feel the need to make. I sense feel like he's even. humiliating Gentiles in this film, and I think it's really fucking awesome. Like that stupid girl, oh, he does. converting him he does. like does. that. And he, One billion like, percent. That's almost like him time. making movies. Like, oh no, yeah, Jesus is great. Yeah, sure, Christians are great. Love it. Yeah, he's he's like, having a great time. And yet, that. every Gentile watches this movie and walks away from it, going, "It was the best lesson I've ever been taught by a master of cinema." Like, motherfucker, it wasn't for you or necessarily about cinema. It's about like like the Jewish interaction with cinema and, and like mm -hmm. what that says about culture at large. And there, I think, again, in some really interesting discussions, some honest ones, and I think some cool ones. Personally, I don't think it's a love. It's not a love letter to cinema. If this is just oh, no, like, if, if anything, it's a death letter. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say it's like Dawson's Creek, but with Jewish sensibilities and those Jewish sensibilities completely expand it to mean something different. Dawson's Creek, mm -hmm. much better, much better. But... Mm -hmm. Fablemans is still incredibly valid and also incredible. I don't want to. Um, they both have ridiculously great Michelle Williams performances. I just want to <laughs> say again, like I don't care about Oscars, but I know that my queen Michelle Williams does. So I hope she gets everything that she wants. <laughs> and she did. She would earn it. She would deserve it. Whatever. She was fantastic. Uh, kind of, kind of a fearless performance. I know it must be weird playing that. Like you know, you're playing your director's mom. Like it must be fucking weird. Paul Dano, of course, is getting overshadowed, but he did great. I was going to say, he's an extremely subdued performance. I thought Seth Rogen was incredible. He's great. He's in it for less than I, I would have expected, especially like but, thinking back. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's really not in it that much, but he casts such a shadow over the whole thing. The thing about giving him that that camera, like the last time we see him as that, as that weird yeah. parting gift. Yeah. There's a lot of greatness to it. There's a lot. Um, favorite, there, there's not a weak performance. There isn't. My favorite part of that scene is that he ends up not using the camera. <laughs> he ends up never using it. He just keeps it, <laughs> which I think is interesting. Like, what do you think that is? Kind of like, like poetically speaking, like he won't. I take have no the... idea. I've been like racking my brain over it. Like he won't. Um, like he can't control something like 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 that guy came in and disrupted everything destroyed his life so far as he's concerned because it was the marriage of his parents so he's like no 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 you can't give me that that like holy relic you can't give me that it's it's like painted yeah. in fact i thought i could control life and you proved that i couldn't in fact you proved it through like the thing that i thought i could use to control like through through the way i tried to control my life i ended up destroying it and I'm not going to take like that's only that's the only thing I can get from it. I mean, I know there's like the easy don't be in the comments being like he was just trying to be nice. I understand like what the scene is <laughs> like, like hyper literally. But like there, there's a poetic language here. And, I, and that scene was too profound to mean nothing. I do want to go back to something we mentioned in the James Cameron video, which is that um Spielberg is the least utilitarian filmmaker in fucking history. Mm. It, there is like nothing utilitarian about him. And I, I got that more than I expected from this because it it's not really structured the way you might expect it to. The one comment I did hear from someone in the audience after was they were like, it's a little slow. That's when I realized like there isn't actually that much outward drama, you know? No. And, like and it's trying to carry like it for, straight, and it's trying to carry it for like two and a half hours. Yeah, and it's not a melodrama at all. The divorce doesn't even come in until like well past the halfway point. I think. I, I think it's a great film, but I do think it's self indulgent. But I think that's part of what makes it great. Well, the the whole Spielberg's whole style is again. It's the same same um philosophy i guess you could say as like his his themes and his subjects which is he just does what feels right in the moment and you realize it never really makes for a coherent dramatic arc sometimes it does or sometimes he did early on like i think jaws and raiders of the lost ark are technically speaking like pretty i guess utilitarian or pretty like they're all about the mechanics but then as soon as he gets to temple of doom he just stops giving a fuck and then, like, all of his movies, like, he never does what seems like the sensible shot choice, the sensible progression, the sensible scene progression, the sensible, like, shot choice, 
which is why like i kind of like that last joke the last shot of the movie too that's great because but like he 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 it doesn't to me like... it has the same psychotic energy as norman bates smiling and looking into the camera yeah like, like bro you yeah. didn't change at all i thought you just went i thought you just saw how, how hurt your dad was from an image i thought you and your mom had a real moment in the kitchen well, as it was because, panning out because then at the end of the movie he meets someone who is similarly minded to him and he realizes he is finding himself in a place where he is free to just be like this but why would you want to be like that like that to me so wasn't have something control. to aspire to it was a dude who so, couldn't like with fucking the, throat cancer screaming about incoherent shit about horizons because it's the only way that he, he could not you know have a panic attack it's he is fully content to live in Steven, go world, to therapy. Go to he, therapy. He, he is fully willing to go uh, live in this world rather than confront a world that is out of his control. And then he's just justifying it to himself retroactively. Which Do you is, think that's a in, triumphant? I feel like it's a triumphant. I don't think it's <laughs> triumph or failure. I think it's. I, I mean, I think it's profoundly human. Yeah, that. but I think he surrenders to the artificiality, which would make sense if you're a Jew trying to make it in, in a Gentile world, mm -hmm. but not as an artist. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, he... It's almost an anti-artist film. Like, he does not learn any of the lessons that you would expect. That's why I think yeah, it's a which Jewish again, tale. Like... <laughs> he, That's, he... Right. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. That's a good... Uh... He doesn't learn any lessons, which is why it's a Jewish tale. <laughs> Hey, it's a tale of crippling self doubt and and, and insecurity. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, no, I, I I generally agree, but I guess I'm more empathetic to it or more. I'm, um... Well, no, I don't think you should be. I don't think he's empathetic about it. I think you're being more uh, empathetic I, I'm than pretty, me. I'm pretty empathetic to it. I don't know. That's that's a world. That's that's an experience of existing that I can relate to personally. I mean, he but... he hit a stroke of genius by casting Paul and Michelle like so good. They can make everything work like pathos mm -hmm. is real. It's there. It's they... not there within our lead. It's there within them. Mm hmm. Why, well, like, what do you think he's saying about his mother nurturing the habit so much and his father trying to make him stop doing that? I mean, it's it's interesting because I, I expected more of like like Terrence Malick's The Tree of Life, where it's like there's this like hard binary between like, you know, nature and grace. Like she's she's nurturing his creativity. He's nurturing his uh, kind of. But if we know um, that creativity means control, like what does that mean? Well, well, I'm, well I was going to say is really when I watched the movie, I realized like how it's not really that binary with his parents. Like I feel like really when you watch a lot of the scenes, to me, it feels like his his dad um connects with him the most when it comes to movies when he's a teenager because his dad becomes interested in the mechanics of it and he starts explaining he like how he does something physically to the film, how he edits oh my the God. scenery of it, and then his dad is suddenly like really compelled by it. Whereas, no, it's even more it's psychotic. It's even more psychotic. It's even more psychotic. He he relates to his mother so heavily because his mother is like the, the physical embodiment of that control of film. That's why his dad's always related to as the best audience that his mother could possibly have. And his dad yeah. was always seen as something that was controlled by his mother. That's why his mother is always the one nurturing it because she understands the control you can have over an audience by showing them images yeah. that excite them. It's even more yeah. psychotic, Isabel. That's sad. That's sad. And I think that's dad. right. I think that's right. Well, well, because like the, because like another thing is like his dad never like becomes mad about her not loving him. Is the weird that's part? That's that final scene with the image, with looking at the image. Yeah, that's the only cry. time. That's the only time. But like up until that point, like the trailer would make you think that there's like fight scenes and this is like a crippling divorce. There's not. Just, he realizes his dad. His dad just realizes his wife doesn't love her, him anymore. She loves his best friend, and he's like, okay. And he's just like, okay, that's because fine. Because he's, he's the audience. You yeah. can abuse the audience. You can neglect the audience. You can leave the audience to rot in a lonely apartment in L.A. And he'll still love you. Yeah. As long as it's an interesting image, the horizon yes. line. If it's on you the bottom, it's psychotic that is. 
Sorry, that just it's, hit if me. It's, it's so psychotic. If it's at the top, it's interesting. If it's the middle, it's boring as shit. I mean, John Ford is a good analog for that, I think, because he was the guy who who um infiltrated kind of the 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 zeitgeist in his own way because people think of him as profoundly American when so many of his films like tear apart the image of America. And so there is this kind of like contradiction at play where like people think of John Ford as like, you know, like John Ford is like popular among uh like conservatives and such yeah. and yet he makes a movie that's like the most scathing critique of a confederate racist i've ever seen and so like or or about how abraham lincoln uses his superpower of being charismatic to manipulate the poor dumb people to the point that the law stops mattering and that's what young mr lincoln is about and i feel oh, like spielberg no. is like that Why spielberg do you is think young John mr Ford lincoln. was so cool in that story though if i met someone like that in that field I'd, I'd be like he's mentally unwell he's mentally ill i maybe i don't want to be like that no he wants that he wants to be the old forgotten distant family member who shows up once every 30 years and looks completely deranged he wants oh. to be that guy he explicitly wants to be that guy because he's like i would rather be that than the alternative God. than being like my mom and dad that is what he is saying and it's so deranged it's so deranged see the thing with the, the jewish reading there's still humanity if it's the cinema reading or the artistic one yeah. that's complete derangement that's complete insanity um yeah it's so hard I, I, I think he is embracing it i think he is opting to embrace the insanity of existing in some strange way i mean it, it, the end of ai is this kid waits thousands and thousands of years for a, <laughs> for a mother who doesn't actually care about him <laughs> what, his mother his like the whole thing in ai is that david is the only one that it feels true love for anything and he feels it for someone who's been dead for thousands of years and he still goes back to her knowing damn well she never loved him well i i did a little bit of like i, I like cecil b DeMille a lot i just want to say something really quick on the jewish reading too um mm -hmm. the the film that ignites his that the train with the train crash was uh, the greatest show on earth by Cecil B. DeMille. Now, Cecil B. DeMille is cool because he's like his famous line is give me 10 pages of the Bible and I'll make you $10 million. Um, on paper, he says he's an avowed Christian. He comes from Jewish background. Like there's a lot of people who think that he was faking being a Gentile or being a Christian yeah, in order to yeah. make those kinds of the ultimate Gentile power fantasies, which were like, you know, about the Bible and ten, and all this kind of shit. So I think I think it's I'm sure that's a real memory that Stephen had, but I also think yeah. it's telling that it is of like the one of the first Jewish directors who kind of hid the fact that he was half Jewish to um I, speak to more audiences. You I also just remembered um the the my my dear friend Julius, he he wrote about this movie and he said that the end of the movie implies that more important than his family and his culture and his you know his, his life up until this point the most important thing that will ever happen in this kid's life is going to be meeting brian de palma and george mm -hmm. lucas in a few weeks and yeah. then <laughs> making star wars and that's going to be more fulfilling to spiritually fulfilling to him than any like growing up with like you know hanukkah or like his family traditions and things like that, his camping, any of that stuff. It's well, that's an interesting. It's an it's interesting. The birth period. of a neolib. It's the birth of a neolib. He doesn't care. Also, because George Lucas and Spielberg together made a shit ton of money, so it's it's interesting to me. He he feels more at home in dominating this world that is completely amoral. Yeah. And, and he, like, he, I, I don't even know if he puts value into his fake worlds or not, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he is fully aware of the, I think he's aware now. I don't, I feel like my, my, the, where I disagree with you is that my, my understanding is that 
in uh, throughout the whole movie sam is unaware of what he's doing to people explicitly i, don't believe like, I think he is i i think he's subconsciously aware of it like i think he's doing it deliberately but i think if you ask him to explain what he's doing he would not like consciously recognize that that's what it is i think he would like his brain would create justifications for what he's doing or explanations and he would just not recognize how fucked yeah, up I, it is i do Whereas feel like he has steven that spielberg moment. i think yeah. steven spiel well i think maybe the end of the movie the final scene with the boys where it maybe hits him and he finally recognizes it but like i think when he was making that beach movie i don't think he realized and then i think before that when he's making the war movie and he's making his friend go into that most oh, traumatic i, I think he's possible. just a psychopath i think at that point in time he's just like yeah this is just what people do and then later he's like, oh, wait, am I a fucking psychopath? And then I think Steven Spielberg alive now in 2022 is like, yeah, I was a psychopath. Like that was that was a fucked up thing to do. But like at the time, he's just like, oh, this is just what you do when you're making a movie. This That's is fair. But then like why include why include like uh, when your mother's sexy dancing, like the eldest daughter knows that it's fucked up to film or like why include that? Like, yeah, you fucked up by getting that kid into a traumatic headspace to act out a silly scene in a stupid movie like mm -hmm. set it up and, he's just and then like, not yeah, complete on the arc like he never learns he never does learn yeah, even in the post yes. prom hallway scene like he is vindicated for it because it's like why did i make you look like that i don't know oh so the yeah, gentile he's can protect it. me from the smaller gentile that's why i made you look like that he's rewarded for it yeah he, he exactly. is socially rewarded for being a psychopath it's, it's... which works as a jewish tale <laughs> <Not> <laughs> the cinema one I haven't read the Torah yet. I want to. I just don't have it yet. It's fine. <laughs> I've I've read the Quran. I'm sorry. That's all I've got. But oh my god, no, it's it's a profoundly disturbing motion picture. I would expect no, it nothing is. And less. I think that the reaction from... is profoundly disturbing. It's part of, part of, partly why I think Munich rubbed people the wrong way because a lot of people saw Munich. And 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 unironically well, thought it was just a badass movie about the Jews finally killing the people, you know, like, finally, you know, yeah, finally um, killing like, the Arabs. And like, 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 no. like there was something like wrong with the way he presented it. And most of the reaction I've seen to the Fablemans is like it's a love letter to film. I've, I've seen a lot of people what? say it's about control, but I've seen even more people say a love letter to film. Um, the, mo the, mo the, 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 the most inspiring message that you can give to aspiring young filmmakers, like shit that I couldn't agree, like I couldn't disagree with more. I mean, I, I'm interested because it's like, I feel like Spielberg cracked some kind of code about, like, mo how most people think because like you'll see people like, like, uh, uh, rest in peace, um, Jean Luc or like Straub make movies that are explicitly about like Holocaust or horrors of the 20th century. And like, obviously no one fucking cares. And they are like well considered, well thought out movies. Steven Spielberg makes the most disturbed, makes a movie about the Holocaust with suspense mechanics, where it's like a thriller scene about whether someone is going to get gassed or not. Motherfucker and people are like, oh my God. With a slapstick so comedy scene. Yeah. And people are like, oh my God, it's so moving. This is so true. He knows Gentiles that people are going to that way. Gentiles do. Yeah, Spielberg Spielberg cracked the code. He knows how to I'm, appeal to these I'm people. I'm telling you, Gentiles see this movie and they go, I want to be a filmmaker. Maker. I I want to meet you the shouldn't. guy. You shouldn't. I want to I want to meet the guy who sees this, knows exactly what it is and what it's doing and still says, I want to be a filmmaker. And I think the to reason fair, he hates like, that's Seth Rogen and stuff. To be fair, I think Seth Rogen is that like thing you can't control. He's like the thing that comes in and you can't control it. You didn't see it coming and you can't control it. You can't fix it. And that doesn't belong in his film. The, I mean, I, for what it's worth, I do think the, the, the scene with the uncle or whoever is the scene where Sam realizes wow this is a deranged thing to pursue i'm a literal psychopath for yeah. doing this and i will be unhappy possibly kill myself and no one will love me i want to do it and <laughs> like i think he is that guy he's that guy that realizes exactly what spielberg's doing he says i don't care i still want to do it well do you think he has any romantic feelings about his high school sweetheart no no god no no i don't know 
Which, by the way, Stephen, it's normal for you to have a love in high school. Like, that's normal. You should not do your weird shit of, like, asking her to marry you at the, like, what, isn't that what he did? Ask her to marry him, and then... Yeah, he says not in so many words, but he, 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 uh, implicitly proposes to her. Because his only understanding of love comes from, like, the fucked up way he tried to captivate his mother. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Movies will bring me love. Guess what they did? Kate Capshaw says hello. <laughs> like But doesn't he refer to Temple of Doom as like a twenty million dollar first date or some bullshit? Like he even <laughs> calls it that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, maybe Steve is the most based guy I've ever met. Maybe he's maybe maybe I do want to be Steven <laughs> No one should want to be Steven Spielberg after watching this. He's the flip side of James Cameron. He 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 he's just he loves it. He loves the psychopathicness. He he he's the guy who thinks it's romantic to be a poet who um, cannot pay rent, is homeless, and living in New York. He he thinks it's romantic to be Charles Bukowski, alcoholic on tv beating your wife like he's like yeah that's the life that's what i want to be i, I want to be john surprised. Fahey forgotten i was pleasantly <laughs> surprised by this film though like like in so many ways and, and one of those ways is the sexuality of the film like doing all it's sorts so of shit erotic. i've never seen i have never seen it's, steven go here before it's so erotic i mean like i think all of his movies are similarly edible frankly but like not just not Oedipal. Like, like like I I do get like he doesn't like his teenage sweetheart, but he is like, whoa, the naked new skin rush. Like, oh my god, like first time making like I feel the tenderness from that scene, even mm -hmm. like, and I don't feel like I get that elsewhere. And then the he doesn't make anyone look sexier than his mother dancing in a fire, though. Like that that he, is true. Because like I think a lot of his movies are 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 about that. Obviously, AI is the most obvious instance, but I think even like like uh, i'm sure someone can make the argument for for maybe et but i i wouldn't necessarily go there close encounters goes there. i mean cl close encounters no, no, no. it's there time. it's there in et remember when they're like living through each other's like te telepathically and he's in class and he kisses a little girl close encounters is a movie about how you should leave your family behind to be an artist it's about how it's desirable to abandon your wife and children forever to become an artist, regardless no, you of whether that's be Steven acceptable Spielberg. or not. No, you shouldn't be it's Steven. It's like the worst lessons a person could possibly impart to other people. That it's amazing to me that he is seen as this like paragon of American values. No, like he proved here that he's like black pilled Kevin Williamson. This is Dawson Creek black pilled. Like he doesn't get oh, better. I he gets it. way worse. I love it. Um, fucking Mickey I love Altieri <laughs> making movies. I love a man who says, I am going to be the worst guy I can possibly be. But well, I, yeah, I really every, am... every Gentile who watches this movie champions the character. Like Because he gets to he gets to win both ways. No, he doesn't this time. I think this time he wasn't afraid. I mean, I, I mean, I, when I say wins, I mean like he still gets to be rich for the rest of his life. And he... I mean, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I just mean like in the film, I, I don't think he minds if you find some of the stuff he does despicable or psychotic. I don't think he minds. I think he is perfectly content with you viewing Sam positively or negatively. That's what I mean. Normally, though, because you're you're, you're trapped although... into a corner where you have to think that the hero is perfect. I, I, for what it's worth, I do think he feels positive and negative things i just think he really thinks this is just quote unquote human nature i think he thinks it is it is the rational or or at least the kind of normal thing to to objectify the world around you to to uh try to do things to exert control or you just become depressed like his that's literally why they have a psychological like complex called the god complex steven it's not normal behavior you can no, be diagnosed I, I think it's just edible, like edible in the sense of like repression and 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 redirection of of drives and such. Like it's very Freudian in like the most bare bones sense. Like I don't think he yeah. he engages with psychology past like 1930. You know what I mean? Like 
uh, Lacan does not exist. Nothing in the past like eighty years of psychology well, exists. It's it also is just insane, Freud. man. Like to watch this it's fucking just, movie. You, it's just you you have things you repress and you do things that are morally questionable to organize the world around you and make sense of it and justify it and then you will continue to justify yourself. He's completely doomed about it. But and I also don't the know film, if... he's telling us he's an unreliable narrator. So how much of this should I even fucking take seriously? Yeah. Cuz it's like he's like kind of romanticizing his own I mean this is another thing by the way. I was thinking about on the drive home yesterday when I saw it is because I'm like it wasn't enough to say I'm going to take the fucking Holocaust and use it to tell a story about myself. I'm going to take my dead parents <laughs> and use them to tell a story about myself and art. And like he he wanted to make this movie in 1999. But he was worried it would have hurt his parents' feelings to see these stories told. And so he didn't. And then he revived it after they were dead. It's like so Which is up. bad to do. <laughs> it's so fucked up. What's That's wrong a bad with thing him? to do. Like you shouldn't oh, have done that, Steven. So fucked up, Steven. What is wrong with you? Yeah, he's what not Steve anymore. He's Steven. We didn't. We don't know this guy. We never knew this guy. I I like to call him Crazy Steve. <laughs> like I have a letterbox list of Spielberg movies. It's just called Crazy Steve, the anti James Cameron, Dark Side Toby Hooper, and that's the whole list. Because <laughs> he is. He's. Because the thing is, like Toby Hooper had a similar way of approaching reality movies. The thing is, is he made fucking horror movies for like eighty dollars. Yeah. And put him on TV. So like he could he he's allowed. He's allowed. He's allowed to make a movie called Spontaneous Combustion that ends with the world blowing up. He's allowed to do that. Okay. Yes. Where about a character where like no one has he ha has no control over his life, so he destroys the world. And like he's allowed. Spielberg, you are you have no excuse for this yeah. shit. Is is Steven like is is he the most financially successful filmmaker of all time? Probably. probably. I don't know for certain, but probably. I mean, I don't think this is making any money, and I don't think it's a problem for him at all. I don't think so either. I don't think it's been a problem for him for a long time, and even if it was, Ready Player One corrected that, so he's probably set for until he's 99. You know, like, I don't think he has a problem. He's doing so this he for made, fun. Like, this is the first time I think he's being 100% impassioned if not passionate like this is real. yeah this, this is a real the, thing he's he is doing this purely for fun purely for, for fun, fun. I this think, is i think it I, means a lot to him though yeah it is i mean for what it's where i think i um a lot of my friends and i agree with them we've talked about how we we think of this movie as like a, a the natural like endpoint of the trilogy of ready player one west side story Fablemans, because they all come after like the aesthetic of the 2010s, which was like the Post, Lincoln, right. stuff like that. And suddenly there's this like marked shift with Ready Player One, and they're all so fucked up and amazing. R Ready Player One is weird because it's just about a like the internet and pretending to be someone else on the internet and you creating your own identity and like everyone's caught in this culture war, and that's just the nature of reality. And then you have like West Side Story, which is everyone's going to kill each other because everyone is racist and they have no choice. And it's like the final natural endpoint is I'm going to make a movie about my dead parents getting divorced and how that made me a filmmaker. It's like... Oh, yeah. But there are a lot of reasons to watch it. It, it is so good. There's a, it's, oh, it's I very think it's sophisticated. Fantastic. I think it's I think the composition is lovely. I think on rewatch, I'll appreciate the pacing like a lot more. Um, I was pretty into it, if only because I found it very like. Um, there was one usually. point where like I was like looking at my phone and shit. It was it was when like the the family member visits and like Michelle Williams has that bad dream about someone coming to visit. I'm like that could have not. Dude, that been. that's like the beginning of the movie. <laughs> well, I did have a moment because I um at one point I went to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, we're probably like in the final stretch. And then I looked at no. my phone and I realized there was like an hour and a half left. Yeah, and I was like.
but also I didn't from care, like a, though i i found it pretty leisurely i had a good time from a performance level too like M michelle and, and paul both went to some very interesting places i think that michelle outshines paul but that's because it was the, yeah that's what she was supposed to do yeah um, she she's definitely going to get more attention but i i i'm going to insist on paul dano if only because i know he's not going to get it elsewhere um, I gotta really insist on Michelle because she's she's deserved it for years. Oh, she also... deserves it. I just like I'm like I feel bad for Paul because I I think what he does is really fantastic in this movie, and it's like damn, he's gonna fall completely under. Well, that like Michelle just like in just his life, dynamic. just like in life. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cast the the the, the teen heart shrub Michelle Williams and the fucking Joker as my parents. <laughs> like, oh my. yeah, it was designed the this Riddler. way. Yeah, or Riddler, whoever the fuck. Isn't the Batman fucking shit. kid that isn't the fucking kid that the the anti-Semitic kid isn't he? Um, the Joker. The Joker. Am I wrong? Is he, he might be the Joker, Joker on something? Gotham or something. I don't know. Forget the reference. To me. Forget the know. reference. But Michelle Williams did say on a stage that she couldn't she couldn't handle playing Steven Spielberg's mom if she didn't first play Jen Lindley on Dawson's Creek, which is I'm right. I'm right. Okay, I'm right, everyone. That's all I'm right. Um, but here's the thing, though. There's no Frank Capra here <laughs> either. <laughs> I mean, I think Frank Capra is pretty dark in a similar way, personally. I think he's great. Oh, but Frank Capra understands morality, insists on a moral compass in every film he's ever made. No, I think 9-11 destroyed any any sense in Spielberg's mind that morality exists. I know that for sure because every single he movie he made following 9-11 was about how there is no morality. Good God, we, Steve chill I, he is he is the least family friendly guy of all time he is a doomer i mean war of the world starts with like suburban families getting nuked <laughs> and it's all just downhill from there it's it's amazing what a is hero that also like a motherless child too yeah uh divorced parents and the end is that they come to the holy land boston massachusetts and oh my god I, I i appreciate a whole movie about we got to make it to to shangri-la that is boston massachusetts like, okay you know who's a healthy filmmaker i swear to god i want to know i want to know what martin scorsese thought of this movie i want to know oh, if sure he watched it. it and went like yeah but i want to know if he's like wow is that really is that really what you do because I no. like try to try to express like like the human nature like when it comes I don't think that oh, that's really no. human nature I think it's a psychopath. Scorsese's too busy making TikToks with his daughter. <laughs> but yeah, like a real family man, <laughs> like a person who cares about the people in his life. Oh. Ugh. Well, we have five minutes to burn before before the recording ends. You better think of something. I don't know. But I, he's he's fascinating. I love his mind. I can't. So I was I was it. hoping this discussion would go a different way. I was hoping that you would you would tell me about how how heartwarming it was actually. You know, mm -hmm. we both reached the realization that Steven Spielberg belongs in an insane asylum, and I don't I think should be I allowed think it to is be around people. It, it it I need you to understand every single thing I've said about Steven Spielberg's psyche does warm my heart spielberg says i'm a psychopath everyone's a psychopath and i'm like oh steve i don't even know if he's saying that everyone's a psychopath i kind of think he well i don't know i i think he just views people and i'm allowed to say this i don't want anyone to take this the wrong way just let i'm allowed to say this i think it's just like this 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 profoundly like autistic interpretation of human behavior <laughs> where it's just like he like he breaks down everything humans feel into like a code sort yeah. of i told you it was a jewish film <laughs> <laughs> the source of autism are you telling me autism comes from jewish people yeah we're the chosen God. people please don't let me get canceled 
pulled over this video. <laughs> I would have had to make I, it to the last five minutes of our incoherent. <laughs> but seriously, I think he just like breaks uh, breaks people down into code. But then he's also like the I feel like kind of a beauty to that. Um, in that like he he's the kind it's of literally guy that Dawson Leary like, though. Dude, uh, I, he strikes me as the kind of guy who would say like, "Love is just chemicals." And I yes. think that's beautiful. I think that's amazing and beautiful. I feel like he's the like, kind of guy who'd be like, oh, you, oh, well, what was grandma like? Ah, oh, she was a beautiful woman. She was, <laughs> <laughs> she was knocked out. All the heads would turn. We all know that guy. We got three more minutes. We did autistics. We did. I got uh, nothing Jews. left. I think, um, me setting myself up to be canceled and you making the shape of a buxom grandma is about the only place we could end. Oh, thank you for watching.